So what is better than making $1,000 or $2,000 in a day from the items that you have created? Let's say that you make that money and then the customer actually brings you back your products the next day. So today's video is going to be another in our series of making money with smalls, except this time I'm going to be calling it the wedding edition. So these items that I'm about to show you not only can just be sold alongside of your other items that you're making, but you can also use them to target the wedding crowd as well as the wedding rental aspect of that. And as this video gets going, I'll tell you a little bit about marketing for both. And also in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make all three sizes of these outdoor lanterns for less than two bucks. So we have a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and dive into this video. If you're making these types of items anyway, and some may be perfect for weddings, why not try renting them out? Because there is nothing like getting paid over and over and over for the exact same item. So the average cost of a wedding in the United States right now is right around $30,000 with $2,000 to $10,000 of that going into decorations and weddings fall into one of those categories that we talk about that people will spend money on their kids, grandkids, pets, except weddings are at the top. And for the types of builds that we like to do, this is a perfect opportunity to not just sell one item, but to potentially rent 10, 20, 30, or even sell that many. And this first one is gonna be a mason jar centerpiece. So this would not only be great for outdoor weddings, but it would also be great for really any outdoor setting. So right now for weddings, farmhouse or rustic is in, except they may just change the name to make things sound better, like modern rustic, like if they had a piece of metal or something. So for this application, it's not just called rustic, it's called rustic chic. Now, doesn't that sound a lot more fancy than just rustic? Whatever, it's a marketing tactic. If you're marketing this for wedding rentals, market it as rustic chic because that's what's in, that's what people are looking up. Or if you're just marketing it to sell with your other items, just call it rustic farmhouse or farmhouse. Don't call it rustic chic. Sometimes you can get too fancy for some people. This thing is four and a half inches wide by four and a half inches deep by 14 inches long. Perfect for a pallet wood or fence picket build. Okay, so let's go ahead and just talk about these mason jars real quick and get those out of the way. You can pick them up for next to nothing. You can actually pick them up at a sale in huge boxes for dirt cheap, like a couple bucks for a whole box. That's all that they have done is spray painted these with some type of a chalk paint or a lighter pastel looking paint. You can really use about any type of paint, let that dry, then take maybe like a quadruple zero steel wool to it. It, lightly sand it or you'll get through to your glass and it will give it that hazy kind of chalky look through a knot with some grass string around the top don't even worry about the flowers because you're not going to be selling them with flowers in it i would suggest if you're going for the wedding look maybe try to do a lot of these jars in white so the average mason jar is a little under seven inches in height so that bottom bar that's going to cross is only going to be about two inches again since this is rustic or rustic sheet so all of this could be put together with brad nails and glue if you're making these for wedding rentals i've actually made a ton of things and I actually used to own a wedding rental business people are rough on your products so make them tough put in a little extra effort make them super durable so what i would do is kind of like what we did on the garden basket which is another great wedding item i can picture those like at the reception with like bread and rolls and things like that in it okay so i got a little off track there so back on track here but like the garden baskets i would pre-bore these sides put screws in this and then put caps on those that will actually add to the look and make them super durable so if you zoom in and look at the end of this thing you can actually see how easy it would be to build so let's say that our two sides we're going to say that they're two and a half inches wide by half of an inch thick so we know that this thing is four and a half inches wide total that means that that centerpiece is three and a half inches wide by four and a half inches tall and then like our garden baskets it looks like that they just dropped down an inch went in maybe a half of an inch and then threw some rope in there for the bottom of these things if you're just making these things to sell not necessarily to rent it's all that they've used is some 3 16th plywood so if you were making these for weddings i would not use the 3 16th plywood at all i'd make these heavy duty i would actually use the exact same material that i use for the outsides and the ends and install the bottom on the inside it's going to make it 10 times more durable and sturdy so with the jars and different types of decoration i have seen prices from $30 up to $90. And this is the one that the PB is selling for $87, which I think that it looks horrible compared to the other one, but obviously people are buying them or it would not have been on their site. So if I were to sell these things outright, I would probably go for around the $30 range. If I were going to rent these things as centerpieces, I would charge around $15 a piece. And again, the awesome thing about renting these things is that they're not going to rent just one. Can you remember the last wedding that you went to and how many tables were at the reception? So that's how many of these things that people would actually be renting and then bringing back to you. So I'll let you do the math on that. So this next one that we are going to cover, I'm going to break down a couple of different examples and that is signs. Not only do 
do people love signs around their house, but they love them at their wedding. They're everywhere telling people where to go, where to sit, where the food's at, what type of food's here, yada yada. There are signs everywhere, and for the most part, they have rented every single one of those. So you can make these to rent, or you can make these to sell. So this first example is going to be more like the type of sign that you'd have sitting around your house with like the little sayings like, welcome or home is where the heart is or whatever so if you're doing this for weddings they're going to be more geared towards weddings the guest book the cocktails you know the welcome signs where the food's at most important part and the crazy thing about these signs both these and the ones that i'll be showing you here in a moment they rent for around ten dollars a sign and they also sell for around ten dollars a sign and i'm going to estimate that there's probably five to ten signs at each wedding so there's some pretty easy money this specific one is eight by ten inches and if you look sticking up from the back of these signs you can actually see how they are put together so this is what they use to make this one it's actually two pieces of wood and yes this is fence picket scraps they've just sandwiched them together then they've used these little one by one sticks you see them kind of sticking up on the back they did that on purpose for the looks but that's actually how they joined this material together you'd have like an eight and a quarter inch stick on both sides glue from the back and throw in some brad nails so that's how simple that it is to make that sign and i know what you're saying why don't you just use an eight by ten board an eight by ten solid board since these are designed for the outdoors they're going to collect moisture really easy and they're going to warp or bow so having two pieces put together actually adds more to that rustic chic look and you'll get a lot more uses out of them and then the little stand that is sitting on more scrap wood here that's all that they have done is taken a flat board put a front lip on it and then it looks like that they put about a 15 degree bevel on the back piece which is what i put on this that way it will just sit on this board then whenever you add your sign it will just lean back a bit so super easy to make you make all three of these signs for less than two bucks and i'll get into the writing here in a moment if i were going to sell these i would probably sell them between 10 and 20 dollars a piece depending on if they're customized or not i'd rent these for around 10 dollars a piece and if you have matching set like this they're going to rent all of them and these next signs you see them at every outdoor wedding and again it's just telling people what to do where to sit where the wedding's happening where the reception's at where the bathroom's at whatever but they're everywhere and again they are renting these things for 10 dollars each and if you look at these things they are super simple to make. That's all that it is, is an arrow pointing one direction. So if you're using these for wedding rentals, make sure the writing that you have on the front, you also have it on the back. That way, either way that they point the arrow, it's pointing in the right direction. They can choose which side. And for the backing, it can really be any size board. I would at least make them maybe 14, 16 inches long. And then the stake, it's just a stake. It's a piece of scrap wood. Probably an inch and a half to two inches wide. Just cut down to a point at one end. They threw a couple of screws in the center of these things. If you're wanting to keep these long term, I would maybe just attach one of those little metal plates like you can get a two pack at Walmart for 99 cents at the top of these things because that's where they're going to be hammering these things in at and it'll last you a lot longer. And then there's also these types of signs that just hang on chairs or hang on ropes that may go across the aisle, just different things like that. Super easy to sell just for people at their homes or for weddings. Now I told you that I'd talk about the writing on these things. I a lot of these things will be used at every single wedding. They're not going to be customized. So there's stencils out there that you can actually buy just to spray paint this stuff on. And they also make the vinyl stickers with all of this stuff that you can put that on and then put a seal coat on that. And I've got a lot of messages from you guys that have CNC machines that have lasers asking for tips to customize some of the previous builds that we have made. So all of these builds will be perfect for either one of those. I actually had a guy to write into the brag board Speaking of that, I'm going to throw a link in the description if you'd like to submit something or check out the brag board. Also check out our Patreon community. It is growing like crazy and we're having a good time. But he was telling me how successful that he was selling the trellises to the different garden areas. What he was doing was selling to a lot of these flower stands and nurseries. And before he would go, he would actually laser engrave or write out the name of the store to give one as a gift. Genius. That is genius marketing. Because he knew that they would not sell that one. They would actually put it as a display, which was a display of his item. So any Anytime that anyone saw it, it was basically free advertising for him. So kudos there. And for those of you that have those types of machines, I'm going to try to integrate more examples of how you can utilize that in your builds. Yes, you can sell all of this stuff without that type of customization, but anything extra just makes it a little bit more enticing. Let me show you what I mean. So this is just an example that I'm going to cut out for you guys on the Thunder Laser. I've actually had this machine for about a month now, and I'm still trying to learn the different settings on it. But this is an example of what I'm talking about. If you have any type of machine for personalization like this, you could actually use it to cut these shapes out and then you could just etch these designs and wording on there. That way you would not have to worry about it peeling off and things like that. And if you do not have one of those machines, I'd either use stencils, I would hand paint it on. If your handwriting is better than mine, make sure to put a seal coat on that. I would use the exact same pricing as I mentioned before on any of these signs. And the cool thing about this for customized items for weddings is people will buy a ton of them because they'll want to be able to send one home with each guest. Yes, there are tons and tons of 
of people out there making these things and selling them in bulk. The one thing that makes you different than everyone else is that you are also making these larger items to rent. So they can rent their arbor, they can rent their centerpieces, and they can also buy customizable gifts. The more things that you can offer to make yourself a one-stop shop, the better. So this next one, this is an A-frame chalkboard sign. So these are the signs that are at weddings, at restaurants, you know, that'll have the special of the day, things like that. That'll also have like reception halls over here. But you'll usually see three or four of these things at an outdoor wedding. If you were to buy these things, this particular one is $275. So let me teach you how to build it real quick for probably less than 10 bucks. I know the first thing that you're going to say is I do not have access to a chalkboard. Well, yes, you do. I've used chalk paint for tons and tons of different items throughout the years. I used to actually take old gridded off windows, paint every other one with some chalk paint, throw on some different coat hooks. Then I would actually market that as something for someone's entryway. So to get the chalkboard section of this, just take some hardboard, like the brown fiber of hardboard, and then paint it with chalk paint. That's all that you would need. So I'd start off by making the frame for this. And that's all that they have done is they've used one inch material on the sides and two inch materials for the top and the bottom. Yes, the top has a handle and a little design, but if you look really close, that's added later on. You're just making a square essentially with leaving a couple of inches on the sides past your bottom board. And what they've done on that couple of inches to make it look like that they have dadoed in the cross board on the bottom, they haven't. They've taken another one inch piece, probably a couple of inches long, and then just attached it to the inside of the leg. And then for the very top of the handles, it looks like all that they have done is taken maybe a four or five inch wide board, fence picket, use the jigsaw, crudely cut out this design and then cut out the handles in the middle. Screwed and glued this down to the top board of the frame and then into the sides. Very easy to do and it does not have to be perfect. You do not want this perfect because this is rustic chic. And then to attach the chalkboard to this, they've actually inset all of this in what looks like maybe a rabbit joint. I wouldn't even do that. I would just make sure that you had enough overlap of the backboard to glue and attach it all the way around. I would just lay the frame straight down turn your chalkboard over, put it flat, and with glue and screws, just attach this right to your frame. Then they just repeated that process for the back, put a hinge on both sides of the top. That way, whenever you pick up on the handle, it just folds up. And then they've just used a couple of screws, then about a foot of cheap chain on both sides of this. That way, whenever it folds out, it doesn't fold too far out. It'd be a great item to market for people's front porches, for their produce stands, for their businesses, and for weddings. So if you're looking to actually sell something like this, I would at least try to get $75 to $100 out of it. And if I was going to rent this for weddings, I would get $45 to $50 a piece for these. And so this next one I've seen on almost every outdoor wedding page that I looked at, and that is this rustic chic lantern. They're doing everything with these. They're lining the aisles with these. That's all over the reception tables. And the big thing is that they are putting these as centerpieces on a table as well. So not only are they super hot for weddings, but this would be super cool sitting out back of like a grill area or on someone's front porch. So since there were so many wedding examples of people using these and they were 20 to $35 a piece without the candle or any type of decoration, I decided to make a few for myself. And what I figured out is is I can actually make a set of three out of one fence picket. So essentially you can make this set of three for around two bucks. If I were going to sell these, I would probably sell them for about $20 a piece. I would rent these for $30 for a set of three. And that is one thing that I did not see whenever I was looking these up, were people selling or renting them in sets. They were all individuals. So if I were going to stage these up to sell, it would look something like this, just because it's different than what other people are offering. So how did I make these? So the three different sizes are six inch, eight inch, and 12 inch. I'm about to explain to you step-by-step step on how to make these. But again, if you're a plans in the hand type of person, I'm gonna throw a cheap set of plans for this whole set in my Etsy shop. The link will be in the description so you can check that out. But even without plans, these things are pie to make, not pumpkin. Your standard fence picket is five and a half inches wide. So the first thing that I did was cut five and a half inch in length and made eight square top and bottom boards. And then the next thing that I did was cut my legs to length. So I wanted my heights to be six, eight, and 12. So I cut four strips to each one of those lengths that were an inch wide. And I also cut four strips to each one of those lengths that was a half of an inch wide. So then I glued and nailed those legs together to make this L shape. So when it's put together, you have an inch here and an inch here. And then that's all that I did in order to get this shape, set the leg on top of my square parts, and then trace this leg out with a pencil. Did that on all four corners, and then just used a jigsaw to cut that pattern out. And then once that one was done, I just used that pattern, laid it on top of my remaining seven boards, cut those out with a jigsaw. So essentially all of these are just made up with the leg parts. And then the top, once my squares were cut out, I attached one flush with my top and it just fit right in. It actually gives a kind of a cool look there, almost like an inlaid look. And then for the bottom, 
I just measured up a half of an inch, that way it would actually have some legs, and glued and nailed all of these into place. All three of these, making them for the first time, probably took me 45 minutes to make. And if you wanted to leave the tops open like this, go for it. I just thought that this kind of gave it more of a rustic chic look. You can actually get these large candles for a couple bucks a piece. For this size and smaller, you can probably pick up for around a dollar a piece. So if you made it this far into the video, you obviously like something about this series. This is actually episode number 14. So if you think that I've earned a subscribe, don't forget to hit my logo there in the bottom right hand corner of the screen because I have plenty more of this stuff to come. So this next one I know that we have talked about before wooden rounds i kind of joked about them before and now the joke's on me because they are going crazy with everything not only are they super super popular for weddings right now the opb has thrown a couple hoes and a piece of firewood and called it a cutting board and they want and they're getting a hundred dollars for this slice of firewood with a couple of holes in it so for weddings they are using these things for everything they are using them for the chargers for the plates they're using them for the cake stands they're using them for coasters so that's where something like this that i mentioned earlier if this was put into a live edge round they would go nuts over it if you know anyone with a firewood pile and a chainsaw ask them for a little bit of help or if you have a bandsaw at home and you have some cured wood that you can make rounds out of this would be perfect and a huge seller and a huge opportunity to rent now chargers and things like that you're not going to get as much money for the rentals maybe a couple of dollars a piece but that's going to be for every guest that they have at the wedding so that's going to be the charger the cup holder and most likely some type of cinder piece as well so that means that you could literally take a pile of firewood slice it up like this put a finish on it and make hundreds of dollars off of it in a day get it back just to repeat that process and not only are they using firewood, they are using branches now. They're actually going as far as to make the ring boxes out of these. They're wanting $20 for this ring box. So of course I had to jump at that opportunity. And I think that mine is better because I actually attached my little ring box lid unlike theirs and you've all seen the kids carrying the rings i mean they're all over the place they're slinging them that's usually why they're like tied to the pillow what do you think is going to happen to that it's going to fly out their hands they're outside it's going to fall on a pile of sticks and then they'll never find the ring so again like before maybe i ought to hit them up and offer them a heck of a deal i'll send them all the tree branch ring boxes they want for ten dollars a piece and if they decide to take me up on my limited edition ring box i'll let you guys know so you can hop on that train with me till next time guys keep your eyes open as well as your mind and go out there and make that money. See ya.